This episode is brought to you by Kimball's Cookies. Custom cookies for every occasion. And by Matthew's Arcade. Custom built arcade games. And Kinesi Shoes. Feed the flame. Okay, here we go. We're with uh, Gene Aguilera, bo- uh, Hall of Fame boxing author, and Carlos Palomino, International Boxing Hall of Famer, former World Welterweight Champion, actor, college grad, and pretty much a million other things. <laughs> Carlos, I can't, I can't begin. First of all, I'll tell you some personal things with me. When I was a little kid, uh, my father, whenever we w- used to watch Taxi, but my favorite episode is the one you're in, <laughs> and, and he would scream up, Hey, John, Carlos is on a taxi. I would run down those stairs quicker than anybody could run down those stairs in that episode. I, and back then, you didn't have DVDs or, or anything else like that. So I had to wait every six months when it would run its course and watch that episode. And it was the funniest thing. Also, I was at the Duran fight. <clears throat> oh, wow. You were in New York. I, I, I'm in New Jersey. I, I grew up in oh, New Jersey. Okay. I was wow. out there. I was in California for 17 years. I came back here in 2018. But my uncle worked for Pony Shoes. And he was the, the uh, human, uh, I guess he was like the public relations director or something like that. And we went there, but I'll never forget. I was so excited for that fight with you and Duran. And it it more than lived up to expectations. And I have a million things to ask. I think Gene has a couple things he wants to ask, but <clears throat> I don't know where to begin. Uh, first of all, when you went, I know you, you announced in the ring after the Duran fight, you retired. Did you go in there with any thought in your mind about retiring? Did you want to get into acting, or did you not like the way it went, or what happened? Uh, no, I, uh, I had, I had promised my mother I was going to retire at the age of thirty. In 1979, August of that year, I was going to turn thirty. You know, the fight was in June. Yep. Uh, I would have waited. You know, uh, I, I just wanted a rematch with Benitez. You know, I, I you know, I thought I won the fight in Puerto Rico. You know, they forced me to go to Puerto Rico. They promised me a rematch, and then, you know, I wasn't getting it. We, they, weren't returning, they weren't returning our calls. You know, Bob Barham wasn't returning our calls. And and then the, the, then the offer came to fight uh, Duran. And I told Jackie McCoy, my manager, I said, yeah, let's, let's do it. Because I, I, I just felt in my, in my mind and in my heart that a win over Duran would, would be almost like retiring with a title. You know, and, and uh, so, yeah, I went in there into that fight. Uh, I mean, it was supposed to be a 12-round elimination uh, fight. Uh, and then, I, I guess, neither Ray Leonard or, you know, Benitez had already signed to fight Ray Leonard. I guess neither one of them agreed that they would give either one of us a, a title fight uh, regarding a, who won the fight between uh, Ray Leonard and Benitez. So then they cut the fight to a 10-round fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I thought I, I thought I would have had a better chance in a 12 rounder or a 15 rounder against Duran because I was coming off fighting nine straight uh, 15 round championship fights. So uh, I just felt like I got, I got a little bit of a late start, and I was I was a little bit of a slow starter anyway because I always mm-hmm. felt like I had 15 rounds that I could I could I got warmed up and I could catch up. I figured out what my opponent was doing, and then I could catch up. And in that fight, it just, it just, you know, Durant just kind of overwhelmed me. And, and and I'll tell you what, you just said to Benitez, they they wanted Benitez to win that fight desperately. It was in it was in Puerto Rico, and it was a big story. That it was it would be, you know, a, a big thing for him to win at the age he won and everything else. But I agree, I watched that fight all the time. I thought you won the fight. I mean, it doesn't matter what we think, obviously, but I yeah. thought you won the fight. And the other thing is, I watched the Durant fight all the time to this day, and. Duran is considered clearly one of the five best fighters of all time by a lot, a lot of people. If you fought him 10 times, you would win four of them. And I I mean that sincerely just because Mm -hmm. what would you do different, first of all? You held your own, and I mean, you kind of fought his fight if you really think about it. You you know, know, I don't don't know that I would would do anything different. I think that maybe uh, I would have, uh, uh, you know, uh, used different kind of sparring partners because he, he his quickness surprised me. You know, I, I expected a lot of power, and I thought, you know, okay, I can fight him inside because I, I didn't think 
that he could hurt me moving up from 135 to 147. But but he he maintained that lightweight speed and that quickness, not only hand speed but foot speed. He could he was in and out, uh, and uh, he was just landing shots, you know, before I could uh, I could react to them, and uh, and that's what really surprised me. So I would have I think that I you know and I I sparred with mostly welterweights and a couple of super welterweights for that fight. I would have I would have brought in lightweights uh, uh, to get me ready for that speed. That was I think that's the only thing that I would have done different because that's the only thing that I I quite couldn't catch him. You know I was trying to counter him coming in, and when I was in early in the fight I was I, I wanted to, I we fought in on the inside, and he was just beating me to the punch in the inside, and uh, uh, so I, I just think that I uh, I would have brought in some uh, quicker smaller uh, fighters uh, uh, as sparring partners for that fight. At, at that point, did you already you were at the Westminster gym? Did you own it at that point? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I always trained at the Westminster gym. That was my training camp. I never went anywhere, but I, uh, you know, Westminster. I stayed home. I, <clears throat> I mean, I owned my own home at that time, but I always went back to my parents' house because that's where I started, and it was. I felt like it was. It was. A, it was a uh, my camp. So I'd go back. I sleep in a garage and in a little mm-hmm. single bed. <laughs> and, and, and every fight, every title fight, that's what I did, man. I just went back to to my roots. Got it. So Westminster, it's, I have another funny story. I used to go to Grandpa's boxing gym almost every day, and Jesse would come around. Yeah. And I, I heard there was one story that was legendary. You visited a school, and one of the kids apparently had told everybody that you were his cousin, not expecting you to visit his school one day. Yeah. Do you remember this story? It, I do. I do. <laughs> uh, what did I, you tell I, 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 you know, I, I uh, I went along with the story. I didn't want to embarrass him. I asked him, who's your, who's your father? Who's your mother? So he told me. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I and- knew it, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody just like, I mean, he was the star of the school after that. <laughs> that's what I heard. And I it was funny, too, because uh, I heard years later, some of the guys that would be at Grandpa's would say they saw you later down the road and they said, was he really your cousin? You're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know my uh I, I visited that Grandpa Jim a couple of times uh, um, uh, after my brother Jesse told me he used to go there. Yeah, he used to come uh, every day after work. I used to talk to him. He stopped by every day religiously after work, so I got to know him pretty well. I haven't seen him since those days, but uh, he would tell me, like, I know the whole story. He got he worked at a place that it did damage to his lungs, and I know I know his life story. It was funny just yeah, sitting yeah. next to him. I get done, and I would be on my way out. He would come in, uh, just a good guy, you know, and then they had yeah. a big poster of your uh, – or your brother um, on the wall, Paul, yeah. uh, you know, stuff like that. So it was, it was nice, but yeah, but everybody, I guess it was, it was in Westminster. So everybody there that had been in boxing their whole life knew, knew of you obviously. And, you know, they told stories. When, when was the uh, college? You went to college after your boxing career? No, no, I actually, I got out of the army in 1972. I got out in, in uh, August of 72 and I, uh, I enrolled in, uh, uh, junior college, uh, first Orange Coast, uh, Orange Coast College, and uh, and I I started training for my first four round fight. So I went, I did it at the same time. I uh, had my first my first pro fight, uh, and then I attended my first class at, at, at Orange mm-hmm. Coast. You know, I I went two years. I transferred to Long Beach, and I won the title in 1976. Came right back and finished my last semester at, at Long Beach and graduated. And, uh, and the, uh, January of 77. The joke at Grandpa's was we always talk about that. I say, you know, he never used that college degree. You didn't have to, though, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. you always say that. I would have, you know, that was my plan. You know, my plan was I, I, I worked. I also, I mean, I went to school and I trained and I had a part time job at the Westminster Parks and Recreation Department. And they, are, they told me before I won the title, you know, I had been there working four years at the park. They told me that as soon as, <clears throat> I retired. If I wanted a full-time job, I had a full-time job. They knew I was going to school to get a parks and recreation degree, uh, recre- recreation administration degree. And, and, uh, so they, I had a job ready until, you know, I, I got the, I got the shot to do a taxi and I just got, I got bit by the bug and that's, I wanted to do that. And, uh, you know, I, I right away enrolled in, uh, uh acting classes and just started an acting career. Now, uh, Gene, so, uh, you, you, I know you have a couple things you want to ask Carlos, but also 
tell us the story. He's on your second book. He's on the cover of your second book. Yeah, uh, he's also he's also uh, John. He's also all over my the, the my first book. You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. mean, he, I I have a chapter on there. Uh, King Carlos rules. You know, and and uh, you know, me and Carlos. I I used to go see him at the Olympic Auditorium. I saw most of his fights there. You know, I say hello to him, and, and we became friends through the years. And uh, we've gone to Atlantic City. We were there for the uh, Ring Magazine 75th anniversary. Remember yeah. that, Carlos? That was around 1995, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. That I was, was there. I was there for that. that was my first was time there, actually. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. first time there. Carlos, it was freezing out there on the boardwalk, man. Oh, I yeah. remember. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah, we, we spent most of the time inside the hotel at the bar because it was just freezing. And yeah, and Carlos had his long hair from because uh, he had just appeared in uh, in Geronimo. Yeah, and he still had his long hair. And and we and uh, Ruben, we took Ruben Olivares with us, so we were uh, we were a good team out there. And also, uh, I've gone with Carlos uh, a couple times to uh, the International Boxing Hall of Fame in New York. Uh, we went. Uh, Carlos went first as a as a guest, and then and then later as a for his induction in 2004. So you know, me and Carlos, we we also have a good history of terrorizing Ventura Boulevard too. <laughs> Tell us about that. Tell us a little bit about that. That that's uh, the that'll be the next episode. But <laughs> uh, but we had some, we've had some good times, and and you know, I, and I'm honored and and proud to call him a friend. And uh, I, I just want to tell this quick story. Uh, in 1997, it was on a Saturday morning, about 9 a.m., I get a call. And Carlos, I pick it up, you know, and I'm, I'm a little hanging. I'm hanging from the night before. And Carlos goes, hey, Gene, what are you doing? I go, oh, you're just waking up. He goes, hey, come on down to the Westminster gym. Meet me there in half an hour. He didn't tell me what for. Just come on down. So I go running down there, put my hat on, my shorts. I'm there, and he goes, hey, help me, help me put on the gloves. So I helped him put on his gloves, tied him up. Here's my mouthpiece. Here's the water. You know, I'm going to jump in the ring and do some rounds. Okay, that sounds good. So he's, you know, he's getting into it. And, you know, it's, it's more than a casual uh, sparring session. It's, it's pretty, you know, intense and, there. And, and he wouldn't have invited you there to watch a casual sparring session. Right, right. <laughs> so then, you know, he spars about, you know, maybe four or five rounds. And, and he comes out and, and I, Carlos, what's going on? He goes, Dino, I'm making my comeback. <laughs> and he, he said at age 47, John, and to me, I couldn't believe it, man, you know, because I, I saw all this fight uh, up till, uh, you know, his last fight with Duran in 1980, and here we here we are in 1997, fast forward, and he's still in great shape. I mean, he, he, he's still a welterweight. Uh, so uh, he comes up, and, he, and his first, in his comeback fights, he wins four in a row all by knockout including a knockout, a first-round knockout of former champion Rene Arredondo, yep. the super lightweight champion. So Carlos is looking good, man. And then there comes a little – I guess he has a little disagreement with the, with the promoter at that time. And he goes on a seven-month hiatus with no fights. And, and now he's 48. Seven yeah. months, no fights. Then he, gets a, then he gets this great offer from Bob Arum to fight at the Olympic against Wilfredo Rivera of Puerto Rico, who just lost to Oscar De La Hoya. So I guess, the, Carlos, I guess the week of the fight, you had a, a bad earache, right? Well, yeah, I had, a, I had an ear infection. And, uh, it, you know, I just didn't want to call the fight off for, for right. the infection. But it just, it just it, it, I was not right. It threw my right. room was off Right, somehow. right. I, I didn't feel right in the ring, but no, you know, but I was able to, you know, perform the best that I could. It, it, you know, it wasn't enough, and and I knew, uh, you know, because I I, I started hearing uh, something about the possibility of of a title fight if I beat. Yes, uh, yes, it was true. Uh, and I mean, I was I wasn't thinking of, that I was going to be fighting for another world title when I made the comeback, but you know, when they were when I started hearing the the, the murmurs. And and I was winning the way I was winning. I thought, well, maybe there's a possibility, you know. And uh, but then you know that that fight would have. You know, if I had beaten Rivera, maybe it was writing on the wall. If I had beaten Rivera, it would have been either uh, Oscar De La Hoya or Tito Trinidad. 
Right, you know, and, right. Who knows, you know. Uh, so, I mean, I knew, and I knew that I needed to knock uh, Rivera out. I needed to be that impressive for me to have the comfort to be able to say to myself, I can, I can step into the ring with either one of those two guys. Right. I needed to knock Rivera out. And uh, uh, even if I had won a decision, I don't think I would have, I would have continued. This is from memory, but didn't Rivera give Pernell Whitaker all he could handle to the point they had a rematch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 I, I don't think and you need to knock had, him out. Nah. He had Shane Mosley beaten for nine rounds. Yeah. And then, yeah. And, and then Shane stopped him in the 10th, man. But he, he had won every round. I was at that fight. And I was and I had just fought. I think he fought Shane Mosley right after he fought me. And I was sitting ringside. I was like, man. I went 10 rounds with this guy. He's beating Shane Mosley. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he was a good, good fighter. He's forgotten for whatever reason. Yeah. But he fought everybody and it was in every single fight he had. Yeah. So if you could put a number on it at age 47, what percentage of yourself at age, when you when you left the first time to then, were you 80% of your best, 60%? Where would you think, where'd you stand? Uh, well, you know, for some reason, uh, I, I felt stronger at 47 than I did when I was a, uh, uh, in my prime, you know, I, I never lifted weights at all when I when I uh, was in my prime. When I from the, uh, you know, in the army, they they never let us lift weights. I said no weights. Uh, we did push ups and that was it. We did pull ups, uh, and then uh, when I retired, I started, you know, I started, I continued training, but I, not so much in boxing. But I started running marathons. You know, I ran nine marathons. I ran an ultra marathon, sixty mile marathon. Uh, and I started going to the gym and I started working out with, with personal trainers and, and they started lifting and I told them, I don't want to get big. I just want to get stronger. You know, uh, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to be lean. I want to have lean muscle. So they put me on this program and I, and I started lifting. And so when I made that comeback, I, I just, I just felt so much stronger. I, I didn't feel as quick though. I, okay. I lost, I lost a step in my speed. I just felt strong to make because I, when I was hitting in those early fights, I mean, when I I hit uh, Ranel Redondo with a straight right hand and oh, I knocked oh. him out of the ring. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, so I just, I felt like I was, I was punching stronger as an older guy, but I just didn't, I didn't have that same quickness. Okay. Gene, you have any, I think you, you know, I know you wanted to ask him a few more. Do you have anything else? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. You know, I, I just want to, you know, say that, you know, Carlos, when uh, he became champion in 1976, when he fought Stracy, that was the first time he had, he had fought out of California. Yeah. So there he is traveling to Wembley Stadium in, in uh, London, London, England, Carlos. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And Carlos was a 10 to 1 underdog against John H. Stracy, who had just defeated uh, Annapolis for the title, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Carlos goes in there and, and, you know, Mickey Duff, the promoter, and they had studied Carlos's tapes. You know, they, they saw his draw against Hedgeman Lewis. They saw an early defeat that Carlos suffered uh, uh, in San Diego to Andy Price. So they, hey, let's take this guy on, man. So Carlos gets over there to England and just, you know, totally do dominate. To me, he dominated Stracy. And I, and I like John. You know, he's a he's a friend. He's a good guy. And uh, Carlos just hit him with some body shots that would have taken the air out of a tank. I mean, incredible body shots. Uh, John goes down. Carlos is the world champion. There he is. And what I thought was really interesting is that Mickey Duff and John Stracy's manager went back and after the fight, they went immediately to the offices and start setting the tapes. They wanted to make sure that that was the Carlos Palomino that showed up to, to <laughs> the man. They thought it was a ringer. They thought they st they stuck in a ringer there, but no, it was Carlos. And, and he you know, a local California guy too, and he fought for a world title, if I'm not mistaken, later on. So did you know of him from the amateurs when you fought Price or what, what happened with that? I mean, that's a, that's a solid fighter, any way you look at it. Was it just no, yeah, no, I, I was uh, I was eleven and zero, you know, and uh, uh, Eileen Aiden was, uh, you know, they weren't they weren't too excited about me when I first started my first four four round fights, you know, I didn't stop anybody. Then I went to six rounders, and they weren't too excited about me as 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 my career. I mean, they knew I was a national AAU champion, and you know, I 
uh, kind of got screwed out of the Olympic Games. Uh, I won the Pan American Trials, was not allowed to compete. Uh, you know, and, and so they knew I was a top notch amateur. I was number one in the country in 1972, beating Sugar Ray Seals, who won the gold medal in 72. But they just they think I had it as a pro. And, but, you know, I was training at Westminster Boxing Club and I basically was sparring with young amateurs. We didn't have a lot of any pros. And uh, mm. so I was 11 0. Uh, I, I had a fight at the Olympic coming up against uh, an all pro that had been rated number eight in the world. And, and he got hurt. He couldn't, he couldn't fight. So I was asking for a fight because I needed the money. Uh, and uh, Jackie decided to call San Diego to uh, another promoter, and Andy Price was fighting the main event down there. His his opponent had fallen out, so Jackie turned the fight down, and he told me, I said, no, take the fight. I can beat him. And she said, I don't know, man. I don't know. And I think, <laughs> I think Andy was like 14-1 or something like that, or 15-1 and one yep. at the time. And I said, I can beat him. I had seen him train at the uh, Hoover, Hoover Street Gym. And uh, so he said, okay, you know, that's the way the fighter is supposed to be. You're supposed to think that way, positive. So we took the fight, and, you know, uh, it was just a knockdown, drag off fight. <laughs> and, and I thought, I, when I went back to the corner in the ninth round, Jackie told me the fight's even. Whoever wins the tenth round wins this fight. And I went out, and I threw everything. And I thought I had to fight one. I had him on the ropes most of the, most of the third round, most of the tenth round. And then within, I don't know how much, I, I was exhausted by the 10th round. And he spun off the ropes and hit me with a hook on top, kind of like side <laughs> of the head. And I, my, my, my right glove touched the mat. And they, court, they scored, they, they, they called it a, a knockdown. They gave me a Saturday eight count. The bell rang right after that. And he went a split decision. Yeah, that's a, uh, and, yeah, and, you know, in that, hindsight, it didn't and, hurt. Uh, and then like, you know, I, we were really upset. The The Olympic was really upset with me. I didn't was really upset with me. I didn't get a, another fight for nine months. Wow. You were to, yeah. to, to, to in the doghouse. You were in Eileen's doghouse. Yeah, no. And then when and then when I when I got the fight, Jackie came and he said, You got they got a guy from Venezuela, Nelson Ruiz. He's twenty one and one with nineteen knockouts. I was like, What? <laughs> and it was, was going to be my first 10 rounder. No, Andy was my first 10 rounder. And uh, so I said, he said, you got to, you got to show him what you got. I said, okay, let's take it. You know, I ended up knocking the guy out in the sixth round. And, and, uh, I, and that night I even stood up and said, a star is born. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. you mentioned something about the Olympics. What happened with the Olympics? You, you won the Pan Am games. What, what happened that kept you off the well, Olympics? I won the, in 1971, I won the Pan American trials. And then I was told that I couldn't compete because I was not an American citizen. I'd, I'd been drafted by the Army. Yeah. I had a green card. But I guess there, you're not allowed to compete in international competition if you're not an American citizen. But you can be drafted and go to war. Because I was on my way to Vietnam before I made the Army team. Mm. And, and then, so then they said they were going to take care of it and, and, and give me a citizenship so I could compete in the Olympic trials. Uh, so then I go on, I win the national AAU championship beating Sugar Ray Seals. And then the Olympic trials come, and they're still, I still have no citizenship. They let me compete, but it was like, you know, if you're not going to allow me to go, if I win, uh, you know, why am I competing? You know, yeah. so, yeah, so that was, uh, and in fact, years after, after I won the world title, I mean, you know, after, I'm, when I wasn't allowed to go I'm, uh, or compete, I I told myself I'm gonna I'm gonna be the first world champion to come out of this batch of fighters. All the guys that were in the Olympics in, in, in '72, I beat them all to world titles. Uh, and and then after uh, one of, one of the uh, one of the U.S. Uh, Olympic committee members that I had met I met uh, I met him I saw him again. Years later, you know, and while I was champion, he was sitting at a, at a fight at the forum, and he came up to me, sat next to me, and he said, "Do you hate me?" <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was like, "No, nah, man." I said, "I'm a world champion. Why would I hate you?" <laughs> he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I'm sorry. We just uh, we made a mistake." 
Gene, you have anything else for Carlos? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and, uh, you know, Carlos was on the cover of uh, Sports Illustrated, you know, when he fought Durand, which was, you know, a big, you know, it's a big thing to be on the cover of SI, right? When you fought Benitez, too, you were on the cover, I thought. No, that was no. a ring magazine. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but anyway, so, you know, uh, I was going to ask Carlos, you know, he was, there was, when Carlos was a WBC world champion and, and Pepino Cuevas was a WBA welterweight champion. By the way, Andy Price defeated uh, Cuevas too, John. Yep. Probably there's the only guy in history to, to defeat both uh, Carlos and Pepino. But Andy, uh, did Andy, Andy fought for a world title, if I'm not mistaken? I don't know. No, I, I don't. No, I don't. Think I don't think so. Know. He did fight Sugar. No, no, I, Carlos. He fought Sugar Ray Leonard, but it could have been before Sugar's. No, uh, that was before. That was before. Yeah, was before Ray Sugar's was title. Yeah. And you know, it was, and he was, he was past. He was done. By that yeah, time. he was. Yeah, yeah, he was past his prime already. But uh, what? Car anyway, so here's Carlos and and Pepito Cuevas heading to a showdown at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum in front of ninety thousand people. You know, it should have been a $3 million fight for each one of those guys. Uh, now, Carlos, and then there was also a big story in, in his Sports Illustrated about that fight. But I just wanted to get your take on why that didn't happen. Uh, was it was it because of Benitez or, was, or something else? No, you know, uh, actually, when we when he won, he won the I won the title first. Right. And then he then he won the title after me. And, and he was in L.A., uh, I don't know, after I had made like two title defenses and he'd made a couple, two or three, and he was in L.A. with his manager at training at the, uh, downtown L.A. And uh, and Jackie told me, you know, they wanted they wanted to meet and talk to me. So we, we went down there and met with him and his man, trainer and manager, and we had lunch. And they talked wow. about, he said, a lot of people are talking about you two guys fighting. Wow. And, uh, you know, in Mexico, everybody wants to see the fight. Everybody wanted and, that. Uh, yeah. uh, so we said, well, he said, but we have an idea. And he said, we think that you guys should defend independently, you know, as much as you can. And then when you get to the peak, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll make the fight. And it, it'll be a, a tremendous, you know, you could sell off the Coliseum in L.A. He goes, it'll, you know, you both you guys will be at the top. And and we agree. We said, you know, you're right. And I said, and, and you, like you said, uh, uh, like you said, it would be, they said, a multi-million dollar fight. You know, payback right. would be huge. So we decided that we were going to go our separate ways until we thought it, that time was right. Now, I thought that the time would have been perfect after the Benitez fight. My, yeah. In my mind, I had, I had already told Jackie uh, after the Benitez fight, because I was really sure I was going to be Benitez. I thought I was going to knock him out, and, and even in Puerto Rico. And, and, and maybe that was that kind of hampered me a little bit because I felt like I needed him to knock him out to win the fight in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, yeah. And uh, so I had already told Jackie right mm -hmm. after this fight that this let's call Eileen and let's make the fight with the Pino. Let's make the unification fight. And I was going to announce it. And I knew that, that after the win in Puerto Rico, I would get an interview about Howard Cosell. And I was going to tell Cosell the next fight that I want is Pepino Cuevas. I was wow. going to announce wow. it on, on, on that interview. And then, you know, it just didn't go the way it was supposed to go and, and uh, never happened. Yep. Where did you guys go eat, Carlos, that time? <laughs> What's that? Where did you guys go eat lunch when with Cuevas? Where did I you guys go? Do you downtown, man. <laughs> I don't remember. Carlos, if, if, if you Mexican, could... It was a Mexican place. I don't remember. It was, Sam, it was Sammy's. It was Sammy's. There was a place that we used to go to down, right by the Main Street gym called Sammy's, and they had like little jute boxes on each table. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, and then on the yeah. wall... Carlos, and then on the wall they had these great paintings of Olivares, Chucho oh, Castillo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, I remember. Yep. It was Sammy's, huh? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, going to your acting career, if you could tell, uh, what is the role you're most proud of? You told somebody, watch this. What well, would it be? Well, you know, I the the role, the role that everybody talks to me about is is a, is a you know is a taxi. Yeah, that's and, the. I mean, one. I play <laughs> myself. I mean, they call me at the gym. They said we want you to do taxi. I said, I'm not an actor. They go, no, it's okay. You're playing yourself. You're playing a world <laughs> I said, all right. So, but I mean, the, the role that I'm most proud of is, is, is in the biggest film is, uh, is Geronimo, of course. Uh, there was a, there was a scene that I had in that, in that film that got cut out because it was, they said it was too violent. Uh, 
and that I thought would have would have probably propelled me into a lot more work than that I have gotten because it was just a, 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 a an exciting. I mean, it was a it was a very violent scene. I get I got shot in that scene, and then and then uh, one of my brothers, uh, native brothers, has got me in his arms and he's crying, and and I'm not dead yet, but I'm I'm you know suffocating in the blood, and you can see tears coming out of my eyes as he's holding me and he's telling, you know, it was just an amazing scene and I was just really disappointed that it got, they got that no. up on the floor. Uh, ah. And right now, but, but, you know, the, uh, what's really exciting to me for me right now is that we have a, my life story is going to be made into a feature film yep. and uh, we're really close, you know, we're, we're close to getting funded and we have a production company. We have actors that are really interested who are already committed to doing the film if, once we get funded. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Did do you follow, bo I never watch anything on TV. You never get introduced to the crowd. Do you follow boxing? Do you go to events? Oh yeah, yeah, I watch, I watch everything. I mean, I even, I even, I'm even uh, become a MMA, an MMA fan. I mean, we, watch <laughs> we watch all the boxing. We just saw that the Figueroa kid, man. What a great knockout that yeah, was. Yeah, that was a great, yeah. great, great fight. That reminded me of one of mine, but yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the other day I saw on Facebook, uh, you know, there people were talking about the uh, the farce fight with Mayweather against uh, what's that kid's name? The blonde kid. The, oh, the, Paul. The Logan Paul. Yeah. What's yeah. his name? Logan Paul. Logan, Logan Paul, Paul, I guess. But anyway, and, and Carlos puts on there, hey, I'll take the winner right now. <laughs> and then I was watching the uh, – know, you know, guys are making like $12 million. A it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke, man, no. these guys. They, I was watching the ruiz uh, Ariola fight, and they still mention in great Mexican showdowns, you and Mondo Muniz, uh, anything you could add about, about you know, there was two fights. Anything about those? Oh man, you know, I, the, the, especially the first. I, I remember everything about the first fight because it was just brutal. You know, uh, Armando was in my chest for 15 rounds, and mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't shampoo my hair for three weeks after that. Wow! Fight. I couldn't. Wow. I, I couldn't rub my head. My, wow! My, my head hurt so much. Uh, you know, I, 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 I had so much grease in my head. You know how they put the, you know, the, yeah. uh, Vaseline it gets into your hair. And, yeah. And I couldn't. I couldn't. I, massage my head for three weeks that's how bad that was uh and you know and just uh just going back to the corner of me uh losing the, uh, you know i was being told you're you're you got to pick it up you're losing the fight you're losing every round the first six seven rounds you know and then i then i started to make that comeback i mean i decided mm -hmm. to step on you know i was i was fighting his fight i was fighting his fight in the inside and he was on muscle in me he was really he's just strong. Our mother was so strong, short arms, just pounding the body. And uh, and then I finally got smarter and went outside and started using my jab and combinations from the outside. I went back to the to the corner in the 14th and they told me the same thing. That I know I don't know if that was Jackie's memorandum. He said, fights even. Whoever was the last round yeah, was the fight. That's true. The same thing. And I went out and uh, uh, luckily – uh, you know, I was able to drop him in in in, uh, in that last round, and then uh, they stopped the fight. And um, and it's so, but that just how hard that fight was from 15 rounds was uh, uh, was incredible. And then he he played a, a Benny Foster on Taxi, so you have that in common as well. He made a yeah yeah he, he he made an appearance on there himself, so that was pretty cool. Yep. Gene, anything? Anything? Yeah, else? yeah, yeah. Real quick. Uh, uh, Carlos was the ringside announcer for one of the most epic fights between Mexico and Puerto Rico, Salvador Sanchez against Wilfredo Gomez. Uh, I, you know, that was one of the most incredible fights I've ever seen. Carlos was at ringside. Carlos, can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, uh, it was just an amazing fight, and I could see – because I was also hired to be the interpreter in, right, uh, uh, right. on the tour, on the press tour. Right. And I would stand between the two guys and, uh, you know, translate because neither right. one spoke English. Right. And Gomez was talking so much. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he was pissing me off. You know? Oh, my God. And, oh, my God. And, you know, and, but, but, but Salvador was just so calm. He would just stand and answer questions. 
and no matter what he said, he would just never, never change his mindset. It was, and then, but at, but before the fight, I went to talk to him and I asked him, you know, how do you feel you know, about this fight? I mean, he's been talking so many. He goes, he, and he told me, no lo voy a noquear, lo voy a lastimar. He said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock him out. I'm going to hurt him. And, you know, and so I, I mentioned that on, on the broadcast. <laughs> And when he dropped him in that with third or fourth round or second or third round, and then you know I said, "Oh, it's it's, it's over. He's gonna finish him or not?" Because he was a great finisher. right. And he 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 let him recruit. He held him up, life. Carlos. He held him up. He yeah. held him up like this and was yeah, hitting he him. Held him up, and then he just beat on him for another two, ten rounds, twelve rounds. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh uh, yeah, it, and that was. Uh, it was just amazing to see that that uh, that guy was uh, just an amazing athlete. To yes. Like yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I and I just want to say too, also that uh, John just let every let the all the listeners, uh, viewers yeah. out there know that uh, that me and Carlos were in the eight, this uh, new documentary by uh, Steve Dubro called 18th and Grand. So you guys check it yeah. out. I know all about that. I will definitely mention that. Uh, I'll put I'll put it everywhere, and then. Uh -huh. uh, our, actually, our producer, who never wants to do anything, he actually wants to come in and ask Carlos a question. We're so oh, excited sure. we have him, and here he is. <laughs> hey, Carlos. How you doing, sir? Hi. It's an honor to have you on the show. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, because you're actually in one of my favorite boxing movies of all time, The Price of Glory. <laughs> and I, I feel like that, like, it's such a nice family, like, nice, I say, but like a good family film, uh, too. Like, because, like, with our, all the turmoil and how it comes together at the end. Um, but with it being so rich in like, you know, boxing and the legacy and such, how did, you, how much were you involved in, you know, training the actors, helping the actors like with, you know, everything? You know, you know uh, I, I got cast as a, as a, uh, I was supposed to be a, a trainer helping, uh, oh God, I can't think of uh, the lead actor in them. Uh, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Smith. Who played the father and the trainer. And I was supposed to be his, cousin in the film and then help him with the training. Now, both actors hire outside, well, the, the, the production hired an outside trainer to to train them. They are, and they hired uh, Benny, Benny, Benny Orquidas, Benny the Jet. Okay. And, and Benny did a phenomenal job of training those guys. I mean, not only training them in the boxing, but getting them in shape and ready for, to look like fighters. Yeah. And, uh, so, but, but, but Benny came to me uh, once we started filming and, you know, asked me if I had any input. And so I watched him uh, uh, before and, and, and I was able to go and talk to Benny and, you know, and make suggestions. And then I worked the corner in, in, in their fights, you know, so I got a little bit of a chance to talk to them and, and while we were filming. So it, it was a, it, it was a really, it was, a, it was an amazing uh, team effort. And uh, I, I, Probably the best time I've had on the production, uh, as far as the movie, because you know it was all Latinos. We all got along. We all got you know we had a great time making the movie. That's awesome. And a great cast too. And you did. You yeah. did. All right. Thank I you. just want to. I, I go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I just want to say thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's wrap it up. I don't take any more of your time, but I can't thank you enough for starters. And I have one more question. It's a, yeah. a thirty-year-plus debate. You have to settle it once and for all. Less filling or tastes great. <laughs> for me it was less filling that's all we need to know all right thank you i can't thank you enough it was a tremendous honor much. and uh yeah like we're gonna have a hard time topping this one gene you spoiled yeah. it. <laughs> thank you once again right, it's and it's an thank honor you very much for having me no thank you talk to you soon gene okay. all right yeah, Carlos. Yeah. see all you right. brother thank you and that's our show, everybody. Thanks for listening or watching wherever you're checking it out. Uh, this show is brought to you by our sponsor, Manscaped. Uh, go check them out. They are saving our balls and they can save yours too. Or somebody you care about. Uh, it's a pretty awesome device. So go check out what they got. The Lawnmower 3.0, the Weed Whacker, and more. Uh, it's a great gift for Father's Day, birthdays, weddings, anything. Uh, so yeah, head over there and use promo code SNOBS, S-N-O-B-S, and you'll get 20% off and free shipping. Also, we'd like to thank our super fan patrons. Uh, they are all Scene Snob family to us. Uh, they support us every month, and you can be one too. So head over to the Patreon channel, uh, the Scene Snobs, and uh, you can, it's $5 a month, and you can join in with helping support us and get the free perks too. 
Uh, also, you can follow us on social media. We are on everything at The Scene Snob, so Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Uh, we are on Facebook, The Scene Snobs, uh, everywhere. We have fun stuff always going on, always have contests and stuff, so go follow us. Check us out. You can go to our link tree by going to thescenesnobs.com. There's our link tree. There's our patron. Uh, there is our all of our shows and the links for all of that. So thanks again for checking it out. Just head over to thescenesnobs.com where everything is, and we will talk to you soon.